you're in the pediatric cardiac ICU and a patient needs to be intubated, but their heart looks like this. How is going from spontaneous negative pressure breathing to positive pressure ventilation going to affect this heart, or any heart for that matter? Heart interactions made simple. I forgot to lie! Heart long interactions made simple. If you are watching this video, I assume you know what I mean by negative pressure, positive pressure, preload, and afterload. If not, you may want to stop now and do some more studying. When I think about how the transition from negative to positive pressure ventilation affects the heart, I take it one ventricle at a time and think about preload and afterload. So how does going from negative to positive pressure ventilation impact the right ventricular preload, right ventricular filling? Blood enters passively down a pressure gradient from the head and abdomen into the right ventricle. Breathing in and creating negative pressure in the chest draws blood in. So changing from negative to positive pressure in the chest will decrease venous return to the right atrium and decrease RV preload. How about right ventricular afterload? We've now put more pressure out into the lungs, so the pressure the RV is having to pump against goes up. So RV afterload increases. Now left ventricular preload. The LV is dependent on the RV for filling, so everything that happens on the right side will be felt on the left side in a few beats. So LV preload goes down, just like RV preload. This is all starting to sound pretty bad for our unhappy heart. How about LV afterload? While the aorta is in the chest, most of the blood vessels that the LV is pumping to are not. So the LV isn't affected by the increased thoracic pressure in the same way that RV is. One thing we need to understand is afterload is not equal to blood pressure though blood pressure does impact LV afterload. Afterload is the work the LV myocardium has to do to open the aortic valve. That work is dependent on the pressure gradient across the LV free wall. So if the thoracic pressure is negative five with spontaneous ventilation, and the pressure needed to open the aortic valve is 100, the gradient across that wall is 105. Intubate the patient, and that gradient drops. Repeat after me, because this is one of the most important concepts in critical care. Positive pressure ventilation reduces LV afterload. Or in my unit, positive pressure ventilation reduces systemic ventricle afterload. Now we have three things that make the heart work harder and one thing that makes it work less. What wins? At least nine times out of 10, the reduction in LV afterload wins and intubating the patient will make the heart happier. When is that not true? Number one, severe hypovolemia. If your venous pressure is so low that blood can't flow into the right atrium when the thoracic pressure is positive, it doesn't matter how strong your heart is if there is no blood in it to pump. Number two, right ventricular dysfunction. Then the decreased preload and increased afterload to the RV matter. But most of the time, going from negative pressure ventilation to positive pressure ventilation is good for the heart, if you can get through intubation, but that's a different video.